No two words in the English dictionary will invoke such a powerful, tactile response in Australian scene kids quite like short stack. The hair, the clothes, the sound. When they emerged from their Central Coast hideout in 2008, with the release of their debut album Stack is the New Black, we'd seen nothing like it before. In a few short years, with the follow-up This Is Bad Country, Shortstack had reached the top floor, and for the first time ever, scene kids were in the building. Whoever said that all good things must end was clearly not a fan of the stack. Following some well-earned downtime, the stack is back. Now, armed with some extra wisdom and powered by a new label in UNFD, it's clear they mean business. Following news of their return, Blunt Magazine sat down with Sean, Brady and Andy to chat about how Shortstack got here and where they're going next. Just the general stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, it's so cool to get to talk to you about your career because I was one of those kids that got to watch you oh, from the right. sidelines being like, it's them when you walk into Hot Dan. It's one of those guys, you know. And what's it like for you guys to kind of think back on that? Because you, you kind of achieved, I guess, cult following with the debut, and then with This Is Back Country, you achieved what I would say is commercial success. So who were you basing yourselves on back in the day? Who were you looking at and going, that's, we want to do that? Uh, the first album was very much, we, we were pretty much a Blink-182 cover band. <laughs> so like, we just, we'd get together on the weekend, play Blink-182 and Green Day songs. And that was pretty much all we did. You know, we just started playing shows. Um, and we started out writing our own songs because other bands' songs became too hard to learn. <laughs> <laughs> so we were like, yeah, we just write our own stuff. I vividly remember being the biggest anchor on this band when Brady started getting into programs and he just wanted to add, like, just a little bit of piano. I'm like, no, 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 we've got to keep it natural, the three years. Oh, you were that kind of man. Yeah, yeah. 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 And, uh, yeah, I was, I probably held us back at And now we're in the years. studio, we're like, orchestras, yes! <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, to be objective about it, you guys achieved a level of success that so few of your peers ever did. And indeed, kind of looking back, very few after you. Was there a specific moment, this kind of aha moment, when you realised how big you guys had gotten? When we were on the cover of Rolling Stone, that was pretty much it. Right. When that mm -hmm. happened, we were like, fuck, what do we do now? <laughs> <laughs> I think that rode live. Yeah, that's rode. Yeah. Yeah. That was that's, fucking cool. Yeah, we're showing our age we're now. ripped off for um, the way we dressed on there, and that was, yeah, the first thing. We like, literally played a show, <laughs> and then, like a, a proper like concert, yeah. Like an hour before we had to go and then perform that one. Yeah. I think you were pretty sick. What well, Rove gave you shit? No, Rove was awesome. Sweet. No, right, no right. just just <laughs> the, the press afterwards. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow, we got, we got slammed pretty hard. That was so like you first hate experience too. Yeah. So that's that's crazy shit. So you got you're not only getting the success, but you're getting that tabloidy look at what they're wearing. They can't just like this. Mm. Yeah. What was it like being one of those bands? It never really happened before because everyone we knew dressed like us. Like that was right, kind right. of the thing. Like you probably dressed like we did. It's like it's not, probably, how, yeah. it's not how we dress. It's like it's just how everybody dressed. And yeah. Like young kids had weird haircuts and. Like everyone did the haircut and skinny jeans and shit, and for us it wasn't that weird because that's what like everyone we knew wore. Right. Like, everyone at Hot Dan looked like us. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, and then it was kind of we were on TV looking like that, and everyone was like, it's a bit weird. But I remember some like press articles writing like bad write ups about us on TV and shit like that, and then they just sent them to us on Twitter, and like we'd never experienced anything like that before. So, so, uh, so how did things start to change after the the indie kind of cold success, and then with the commercial success? Was there a marketable difference? Did you guys notice it, or was it the same shit? How did things start to change once you got to that dizzying height? Um, I reckon we were one of the last bands that it was like shamed upon to, what do you quote unquote sell out? If you put your, what is it? If you have your song on, I don't know, a certain right, yeah. program or something like that, you call it a sellout. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's interesting to look back at Short Stack TV. I don't know if you guys do because I know it's weird to look back at we yourselves. Do not. <laughs> And it's really interesting when you go to the very first one. The very first one is you guys fucking with each other <laughs> so hard. Um, the loving and laughing, and I think someone busts in on someone in the shower. I think you're in the shower. Yeah, this sounds really weird. It gets to the end. I guess it's season one of Short, Short Stack TV. And the vibe is very, very different. Is it? Of. Yeah, so there's the energy. It's kind of, it's dipped. It feels like... Yeah. Something's changed a lot since that first one. Mm. I mean, what was going on on that last video? What was going on in your heads at that time? I mean, at the end of the, that era, what was going on there? I don't know, I got over it a little bit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's quite hard to... Um, there's a lot of travelling away from your family, away from your friends and stuff a lot. And that's kind of the, the trickiest thing about being in a band. And that's kind of why we sort of stopped doing it, because it's got to a point where 
we were we we're away for six months, seven months a year. There's a bit of frustration as well, I think. Um, we never felt like we were comfortably in our place. It was always feeling like people were saying we need to be over here, but the people who love us were like happy, but then, it, you know, it was just yeah. always, um, yeah, we never felt like we had our happy, comfortable place, I think. <laughs> was it that amicable? Was it amicable? Was it sweet? Was it just kind of like, hey, everyone, let's stop, and everyone said, yeah, I agree? Um, I, I, I initiated it. I think mm. maybe we, we're not really vibing anymore. I think we kind of did the tours that we were doing, and then we just kind of called it a day. Right. And um, I guess the main energy in that last one is tiredness. That's really yeah. the kind of thing you take away when you watch it. You guys are fucking tired. Yeah, and we listened to that third album, and it doesn't sound like a short stack album, the one that we did. And then the dichotomy between that and what we're doing now, and so I went to the studio now and like, it's kind of funny, I remember we did, we recorded the third album like on, over a public holiday and we recorded over Australia Day and we were like, nah, not over Australia Day, like I don't want to do that, I don't want <laughs> the album. And this last one we did over a public holiday too and the producer was like, we're taking a public holiday off and I was like, fuck yeah, it's TV. <laughs> I'm working man, we're going in there, we're making this good. So just the energy we're putting into it is in the right place. Awesome, well yeah, let's fast forward all the way up to now. <laughs> 